Happy Saturday, ladies, and you're welcome to the Today's Woman Show. My name is Renee Q. Boateng, and I'm so excited because today is going to be so empowering. You really cannot miss it. We'll be right back. It's time for the monologues. This is when we hit the streets of Accra and we speak to so many different women on any topic. Let's see what it is this week. Uh, feminism, I, to, to me, I think it's um, a way to help females, irrespective of their age, young, old, so that they can bring the best out of them. It's more or less like you having a right to everything and like as men do have rights for everything, we also do have the rights for everything. It's not only men that can be in power and do everything, we also have the right to do everything. So it's not mostly about men and their thing, it's also ours too. So we also have the right to do everything in this world. Whatever they can do can also play the same role in every society. I feel women should be given equal opportunity because day in day out. They are being influenced, okay, they are influencing so many people. And then when that opportunity is given to them, I think it will influence people positively. Our culture is said that women are not given chances to explore whatever is within them. Society keeps them at the background. So even if you are a woman or you are a female and you want to excel, society sometimes even give you bad names, like you are a witch, you are this. They always want the male to excel. So if there's an association or a group that wants to promote women or uh, the female to excel, I back such uh, society or organization. The feminism that I believe in is, is said that everybody is supposed to have um, the same rights. Women shouldn't be looked down upon. Women shouldn't be, um, people shouldn't say women don't have to do this. Women should not rise to this place or women are not supposed to be in this place. That's what I believe in, but not as in a woman is not supposed to cook, a, a woman is not supposed to wash and all that. It, it, it all doesn't add up to. I believe there are roles for men and there are roles for women. And if everybody is supposed to, do his role well, the world would be a nice place to live in. I do believe in it because I think that women are marginalized when it comes to a few things. But some other people take it to the extreme, like the men don't count or they're, impor they're not important or the things they believe in don't count. I believe that the men are, are as important as the women are. There are some things like in leadership, in social issues, some places even in the north Women are not allowed to own properties. In this case as well, women should be given much more attention. But in some other places too, men should be given attention. Some people say men cannot be raped. It's not true. I think men can be raped. They should come out, speak about it. And you know, that's why I think feminism is a good thing. I don't believe in it fully. I'm not an extremist. I think it's good as bad. It has its positives and negative sides. Yeah. I don't believe the feminism in court that you know that I'm talking about. When women think that I, know the, I don't need a man in my life, I can do it alone. Yes, you can do it alone, but a man is also very important in the life of a woman. That's what I think. The woman on the move is a female entrepreneur. She's really driven, pressing on towards her goal. Let's see who she is this week. Decades ago, Mothers the World Over used cotton material held in place with a safety pin to wrap the bottom of babies. These were made out of terry towel, normally folded in a desirable shape. Wool pants or rubber pants were sometimes used over the cloth diaper to prevent leakage. However, 
It was soon realized that the rubber pants were harmful as it was discovered to have a damaging effect on the skins of babies. To overcome diaper rash and infection, the modern diaper came into being. These days, diapers are the preferred choice. Diapers are types of underwear that allows the wearer to defecate or urinate without the use of a toilet by absorbing or containing waste products to prevent soiling of outer clothing or the external environment. For over 13 years, Matilda Ahiavo of Mati Enterprise, located at Nungwa Market in the Great Haka region, has been in the diaper business and has no regrets. After being in the fashion and designing world for 30 years, she was advised by her medical experts to quit the business since it had a diverse effect on her spine and eye at the same time. Getting so much contract and the need to meet the deadline of her customers made her to sit for long periods, which usually meant working deep into the night. Her eyesight as such became greatly affected. She did not quit outright since that was her source of support to the family. Searching for a new source of income, she turned to the diaper business. One day, no. I had a revelation that I was in a Pampers shop. I then told my husband I wanted to go into the Pampers business. He encouraged me and asked that we pray for direction. With just 50 Ghana cities, she started selling diapers. When she started the diaper business, people bought them out of curiosity and knowing they had no idea about the product. She often took time to educate them, especially nursing mothers, on the essence of the product and its economic and social importance. Finding a new product led to her customers telling their friends about it on the market. This made her demand to go high. She was so proud to be the first person to introduce a diapers in the area and for 13 years she has not looked for another source of income. The business, according to her, has been very lucrative. Profit is not but all the time, you know, who is going to go to Although the profit is minimal, business has been okay and customers do not come to buy on credit. She attributed her success to her faith and remains grateful to God for the prospect the business brings each day. However, the changing dynamics of the economy leads to fluctuating prices. Business has been quite slow due to the economy, which has had diverse effect on the prices in the market. In addition, most people are into the business now. Diapers are normally worn by infants and toddlers who are not yet potty trained and by children who experience bed wetting. They are also used by adults in certain circumstances where access to a toilet is unavailable or for psychological reasons. These can include those of advanced age, patients bed bound in a hospital, individuals with certain types of physical or mental disability. It is easy to handle, cost effective, quite convenient to use and could be disposed with ease. Mothers increasingly want freedom from washing diapers so that they could work and travel, causing an increasing demand for disposable diapers. Our winning woman for today is a winner. She's Reverend Jennifer Pratt. She's the founding pastor of Bethel Foundation Ministries in the UK. And she's also the host of Let's Talk About. It's a very popular TV program in the UK as well. You're very welcome, Reverend Jennifer. I'm so honored to have you on the show today. I'm already feeling the power. I know today <laughs> is going to be so exciting. Thank you it's so much. It's such a pleasure you. to have you on. Thank now you. I have to, uh, let me share this with you actually. So I went to St. Rose's Secondary School in Aquitia and I was a very, very like high time or like I loved entertainment, I loved dancing and everything. So 
you know, in Form 3, I mean, I knew that I would be one of the prefects. And I wanted, I, everybody thought I would be the entertainment prefect. I wanted to be the entertainment prefect mm -hmm. as well. So on the day they were announcing it, when it got to entertainment, I mean, some people were even nudging me. Like, and I was just ready to just get up and go. And it wasn't me. It was a very good friend of mine. And I was thinking, okay, if I don't get entertainment, I'm sure I'll get dining hall. Reverend Jennifer... I didn't get dining hall prefect. Mm -hmm. It got to chapel prefect, and they mentioned my name. And I was thinking, <laughs> which chapel? <laughs> Why me? <laughs> now, I'm, 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 I'm sharing this today. I was thinking about it when you were coming on, because I was thinking about the calling. I mean, like, how, are you, how, are you, how do you know that you've been called? Well, to be honest, I actually never thought that I'd be a, a minister of the gospel. And I'm, it's... Every day I'm amazed that I am. Wow. And not just me, my friends, my family are <laughs> amazed, are equally amazed as well. A couple of days ago, I bumped into an old friend and they were surprised. They didn't they know? Said, well, they knew, but they thought, <laughs> we, we, we still can't believe it, that you're actually into ministry. But I would say that um, it, was a, it was a journey. Mm. Um, how I became a Christian, it was, mm. it, it, it was a journey. Mm -hmm. and, um, but the, the thing is, from the day that I actually became a Christian, I knew that I would be involved in ministry. Really? I, yes, I did. I didn't have the guts or the boldness to tell anybody. I knew in my heart. I just didn't tell anybody because I wasn't sure how it would be perceived um, because of, you know, my background and, you know, and everything. Um, but was it fear of being judged? And do you think that is one thing that is probably pushing um, people from, you know, you professing Christianity? Um, yes and no. Fear of being judged, true. Um, but I also think that People look at um, Christianity and ministry as something like so it's for others. I'm not good enough. I'm not mm. perfect enough. Mm. And for me, that is what it was. I, I knew that this is something that I, I know I'll be involved in it. Mm. But I just thought, I looked at those who were, you know, preaching, those who were in ministry, and I thought, uh, they're good. I, I can't, I'm not like them. I, you know, so I thought. I mean, that's what I, I mean, yeah. of course, I'm not a minister or anything. But at the time that I was a chapel prefect, I, I, what I said was, I'm not creepy. You know, and, and we had that term in school. Yeah, Prefet, I, I was never creepy either okay. when I was in school. I, I never, I, 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 I was, went to the University of Ghana and I remember even there's a friend of mine who still teases me about it <laughs> today that when we were in our rooms in Volta Hall and the, the creepy people were going for their meetings, I'll be sitting in my room and then just sort of like cat calling and laughing <laughs> at them. You know, it was like that. So it was like a shock that not only are you now a Christian, you're, you're actually in the ministry. Wow. So, uh, yes, that, that, that's, but um, I and thank God. And I have God been anyway. in many of your services, and mm. I have to say you are a powerful woman of God. I, if I haven't said it before, I must say. <laughs> I mean, I just love the way you use the word of God to uplift women. So it's not just about, you know, the Christianity as an attack, as in be good, be good, be good like that, you know, but real life applying it to your life in different ways your emotions your mm. your everything i have to say thank you very much thank, thank god, god for your life thank god for your life so mm. what was life like before being called um life before being called well after school after university at that time it was the thing that everybody wanted to travel so i did no plan now we look back and we say, maybe God had a hand in mm. it. He probably did. But at that time, we're not thinking about God. Um, you know, I want to travel. Everybody was traveling. I want to go to London and everything. I never fancied the U.S., so by hook or crook, I have to get to London. So we got there <laughs> by any means fair or foul. We planted our feet there and um, started working. And I remember getting into London and I said to myself, you know what? This is, we used to call it guru labor. You know, I said, I, I don't think I can handle it for long. And the only thing that I knew at that time because of, you know, quote unquote racism and things like that, mm. the only thing I knew that if I did, it wouldn't take me a lot of time, but at least I wouldn't have to be doing hard labor, was to do a secretarial course. Right. It wasn't my ideal plan. But you have a degree in English. I though. do have a degree, so, yes. so, so, so don't you think that's what took you to, to the, you know, English? 
well, country? Well, it was, I, I, not really. It was just to get out of Accra at that time, you know. I, I, I didn't have any plan of even going to live there. Okay, no, so you just traveled. You I just, just traveled, to, okay. yeah, I just traveled. Mm -hmm. So we did the course. It was a short course. Within a year, I'd finished. And actually, before I finished the, the course, I got a job as a PA okay. within a law firm. And oh, I was surprised, wow. you know, yeah. So we're working and I was, I loved business. I grew up as, my mom was a trader. She had a shop in Okanshi. So I, my grandmother was a trader. I grew up in that environment. So I loved business. So I used to, you know, travel, you know, within Europe, buying things, you know, and selling it. Eventually I had a shop oh, in wow. London. Okay. So that's what, and I was working as, mm. you know, working as well. Then um, a friend invites me to a, um, a Crefe meeting and I didn't even <laughs> want to go. And then that's when I became um, a, a Christian. And that's where they, well, I mean, not, that's why I became aware, mm. I had an actual personal relationship with But with before God. then, what did you think of Christianity? Um, I actually considered myself a Christian, to be honest. But you were not practicing. I wasn't practicing. Okay. Yeah. Because I'd been brought up mm. within the Methodist church. Mm. You know, I, my, my dad, when we were growing up, used to let us memorize scriptures every week. <laughs> yes. So I, I was familiar with the scriptures, actually, because we used to have to mm. memorize quite big chunks of scripture. Wow. Everywhere he would give us ice cream or take us to the years. <laughs> You know, so th that's that was my background, and I loved Methodist. I used to read to my 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 grandmother in the Fanti Bible. You know, oh, she became wow. blind in her, you know her, the latter part of her life. So I used to read the Fanti Bible to her. I was familiar with it, but it wasn't something that I was um, applying applying to my life mm. or anything. And mm. that was the that was a question that the Lord asked me actually mm. um, at the the point at which I. I invited Christ into my life. You know, I listened to a message. It was through the ministry of Billy Graham. Right. Yes, the, the mm -hmm. late Billy Graham. Mm -hmm. It was at one of his um, his crusades that I actually became saved in the late, um, I would say, just before, the late 80s, before okay. 1990s, a long time ago. Well, you look very yeah. good. I, can, I don't want to even <laughs> guess your age. <laughs> long time ago. So the question that came to me is, how real is God to you? Mm. The preacher didn't say that. It was a question that kept on asking us, so how real is God to me? And I think that's a question that we all need to ask ourselves. Mm. We talk about God, and I know as Ghanaians, we are all very religious. Mm. We talk about God, but how real is God? How real is his word to us? Mm. What impact does his word have mm. upon us? Does it influence your actions? Does it influence your decisions? Does it influence your thoughts? I realized mm. that it didn't. It didn't. Mm. And so at that point... You were true to yourself. Yeah, it, I realized it didn't. Mm. Because, I, you know, I, I was doing... It, it, what I wanted to do was mm. what I wanted to do. Whether or not it was against the will of God. Exactly. Mm. What I wanted to do was what I wanted to do. So I realized that God isn't real to me. Mm. I'm not really a practice. I'm a nominal Christian. Right. But I had to come to that reality. Mm. And God is real. But it's a personal thing, isn't it? It's a personal it decision. It is. So nobody can be forced. Like, you have to get to that point yourself. For sure. And then that's when for you sure. can accept it well yeah, and apply for sure. it. I always say that, you know, uh, sometimes other ministers think maybe I'm too open. But I always say that we need to give people time. Mm. Most people, ministers, where they are at, they didn't get there overnight. Mm. But sometimes when we are preaching and speaking to people, we are expecting people to get over situations overnight. Mm. But we ourselves didn't get to those places mm. overnight. Mm. So we need to mm. allow and give the Holy Spirit a chance to work in their lives. Mm. We, our, our role is to guide by the word of God and let the Holy Spirit really lead people. Talking about other ministers, um, I'm, I'm just wondering, what is it like being a female minister, a woman of God? I mean, you are the head of a ministry. My pastor as well is a woman, Apostle Mrs. Leanne Kofi, yes. whom you know very, very well. Yes. I remember there was one time that we were having a crusade in church, and I gave a flyer to a friend, and it was her picture. And the comment was, but why is your pastor's wife on, on, on the flyer? And I said, this is my pastor. And she was quite surprised that it was a woman. You know, but now there are so many powerful women you know, being called by God who are starting powerful churches, powerful ministries, you know, what is it like? And do you have any opposition in quote from, from the male pastors or do you feel, is there any intimidation or anything like that? Um, 
if there's intimidation, then you would allow yourself to be intimidated. Um, the thing is, it's, it's not easy, but ministry by itself is not easy anyway. Mm. It's a, be a spiritual, be, whether you're a man mm. or a woman, mm. um, it's a spiritual work. Mm. So it, it takes God's grace, man, male or female. Um, where it becomes a bit of a, a challenge is expectations of, of people. Mm. And I'm picking my words very carefully. <laughs> Is expectations of mm. people. Um, people are okay with a woman teaching, um, but when it comes to the, the headship, you mm. know, I guess, um, I guess for me, um, being single, it has been a bit easier mm. in that regard because I haven't had the... Um, mm the sort of like complaints that um, right. you are not submitting, okay. you are not, okay. yes. Okay. So it's enabled me to focus, mm. is really, and right. the Bible does say that a woman that is single, her all her attention is on the Lord, and mm. it is true. Mm. So I have that added advantage. Mm. Somebody may think it's a disadvantage, mm. but, but, but I looking, have that. Yes, 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 I choose to look yes, at it that yes. way. Yes, I, you mm. know, I choose to look at it mm. that way, that I have the time mm. to give my 100%. Sometimes even the church members even sometimes want to look up to a man and not a, women, a woman. Um, it, it depends. Do you think it, it depends on the culture? I mean, you are in the UK. Okay, and very soon I'll ask you about a difference that, uh, that has come to mind. But do you think it also depends on the culture as well? Um, well, even in the UK, women ministers still face a bit of, um, you know, um, uh, challenge. But I, I guess at, at the end of the day, because there are men in, the, in, in, in our ministry, I guess it depends on how you have impacted their lives. Right. It depends on how you have impacted their lives and how you relate, mm. and mm. how you relate mm. to to to, mm. to to people. This question is just coming up. I know you haven't finished yet, but mm. I just, I just, just, I just remembered. Um, so I, I, I was on a trip of evangelism, and I was just calling different people, and I called uh, um, my, my my you know my my brother's friend. A, a younger, you know, um, lady who is like a, a younger sister to me. And I remember I was telling her, oh, you know, I, mean, I want to invite you to come. And she said, oh, please, I like fashion too much. I like style too much. Now, I want to talk about fashion, style, and Christianity. Because you are a very stylish woman. And my pastor is an extremely stylish yeah, woman. Yeah, absolutely. I and, and, you know, a lot of people actually think that to be a Christian, you can't wear makeup. You can't, you know, dress up. You can't be stylish. You know, maybe educate the woman a bit out there about, you know, being... Because you should be beautiful. You should be... For me, I think it's even exuding the glory of God what? when done decently. Yes. If you see, the thing is, um, things must be in moderation. Mm. And um, I believe that when it comes to matters of dress... It's your motivation, mm. the motivation be behind what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hundred percent for looking, you know, looking good, looking mm -hmm. well, looking mm -hmm. good, you know. And um, the Bible says that you know everything is permissible mm -hmm. for, for you know every, everything is allowed, but it's not everything that I'm, I'm looking for the right way to put it. <laughs> it's not everything that we can we can do all things, but not everything is you know permissible for us to do. So if um if in in our church the young ladies, I remember just for an example, there was a young lady who started coming to our church, and she used to wear all these bodycon things, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, I never said anything to her. I I didn't feel that I had to say anything to her. You know, I, and, but I, I thought, you look good, but... Um, a bit too much? Yes. So Is it because of her body shape or her body shape Yes, is like? very voluptuous. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I... But I guess she had come to the church, she had seen me, I put on makeup, I, 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 you know, I dress well and everything. So that was how she felt that, you know, 
he, he, you, she, she could present okay, herself. It was yeah, okay. So to come like that. And then so, you know, and I knew that some of the, uh, the church members were expecting me to, to say something mm -hmm. to her, but I didn't say anything to her. Then it so happened that she had been looking for a job, and by the grace of God, she got a job that she really liked and she really wanted. So mm -hmm. I just called her, and you know, she came to me to tell me she was so real, so all of us were happy. So I said to her, I said, you know what, um, now that you've gotten this, and it was, you know, a job within the, you know. Uh, 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 a good job. Yeah, yeah. That you can't go wear a body con dress. So and that's I said, how she was dressing all the time, so that was her style. All the time, that was her style. Mm -hmm. So I said to her, now you've got this job, you know you can't go there with a body con. She said, oh, yes, 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 I know. I'm going to wear, um, I've, I've got some skirts and shirts that I'm going to wear now. So then I said, okay, if you realize that for there, you can't wear a bodycon and you're going to buy some skirts and shirts, how about church? What do you think? Mm. She says, okay, pastor. So you waited for the right approach? Yes, yes. Mm. You understand? Mm. Because uh, souls are precious to God. Mm. Th that's the bottom line. Souls are precious to Jesus. He died for them. Mm. We have no, we're not encouraging wrong, but at the same time, we need to treat souls with the, with the, with, look at them with as Christ looks at them, mm. precious in mm. His sight and valuable. So not to put them off, not yes, to take them away. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Because when I became a Christian growing up. I went through things like that, mm. you know. People mm. put me down a lot mm. for things like that. Mm. I know how it feels like. Mm. Right. I know how it right. feels like when so you, you go into put somebody yes, else in the yeah, same position. Exactly. Now I'm invited a lot to speak in churches. Sometimes, um, you know, I I've, I've been a fashion designer, a stylist, image mm. consultant for a very long time. Nowadays, I'm invited a lot to speak. On, on the image of a Christian woman. And mm. I think it's understanding your body. That's also very, very yes. important. Yeah. So sometimes you can admire something on somebody else, but you have to also understand your body and just realize that it won't look the same <laughs> on me. So like a size eight in a body con is different from a size maybe 18 or 20 exactly. in a body con. Yeah. And that's when it's almost like leading and misleading, <laughs> you yeah. know, and, and all of that. So I think it's, it's also important to teach yeah. You know, to teach. But you motives know. are important when it comes to dress. Everybody mm. needs to be honest with themselves. Mm. Why am I wearing Why am I wearing yeah. yeah. That's, that's, the, that's mm. for me, that's the bottom. Mm. Motives are important. Mm. So Why do I be want a good motive? What, what is a motive that isn't good? Or not so good, if I should say. A motive that's not so good. If you are wearing something and um, a dress or something, and your, your breasts, for one, you know, are all out there. It's like a motive of seduction. Yes. So you're just out to And you know, juice. yes. Right. So you know, people, you, honesty with yourself is very mm. important when it comes to these things. Mm. Some genuinely don't know, but I believe that there is a line at which people know. Some people Everybody intentionally knows. go yes, out to that do that, are. right. Yeah. So right. we leave people to their conscience right. and, and right. for them to now do Now I want us to talk a little bit about the strength of a woman you know, about the power of a woman. I've had so many powerful, beautiful women come here. And I, a lot of the time I ask for definitions or for, for, for their sort of like um, mindset on different issues. I want to talk about power today, okay? Mm. Now, what do you think is the difference between and, and who is a powerful woman and what is the strength of a woman? Okay, we well, look at what is power. Mm. In essence, power is having the, you know, the capacity to control mm -hmm. or to determine the course of another person's actions or another person's thoughts. Mm. So we can talk about the power of seduction, mm. yeah, where you're using your physical features to control the thoughts, mm. the emotions, the actions of another person. I've never thought of that. Wow. We can talk about the mm. power of money, mm. where you use your money to control the thoughts, the actions of another person, mm. or even to control the environment mm. of a place. Right. So when it talks about a powerful woman, mm. it depends on where that woman is placed. Mm. A powerful woman can be a woman who has influence on her husband and her children, whereby your life changes the way they think, the, the way impact. they act, their, their decisions, mm. the impact that you have. Mm. For me, 
that in essence is power. That in essence is power. Mm -hmm. Where you have that capacity or capability to do that. Mm -hmm. When it comes to ministry, really, if we look at it, that's why Christians are all powerful. Every Christian. Every Christian. Because of the power of God in us, we all have the potential, the capacity to influence or to cause other people to change their mind. For example, to mm. speak to a person and by the grace of God, the person turns their lives to Christ. Right, right. It's a power. That is power. Mm. So when it comes to a powerful woman, I believe that when a woman combines wisdom and she is aware, power also starts with self-awareness. Mm. If you are not aware of yourself or you don't have an awareness of destiny on you, you it's unlikely that you will walk in, the power may be latent, but you may not necessarily walk so in you, it. So do you, do you need to be confident to be powerful? No, there are some confident fools. So it's not necessarily um, <laughs> being confident to be powerful. I'm sorry if I said it that way. <laughs> you know, what is co confidence is being bold to, you know, not being intimidated by circumstances. But there are some fools, excuse me to say, mm. who are very confident. It doesn't mm, mean no that you're wisdom, powerful. Yes. But, you know, very confident it, it, without it, wisdom. Yeah, without right, wisdom. Yeah, right, there's a difference right, between right. confidence mm, and power. Mm. Is you understand? Right. I can be very confident, but I'm not necessarily changing In, yes. uh, somebody's Without thoughts any, or determining right. somebody's I get you. you understand? Right. So you can't be confident, but mm. it doesn't mean you're necessarily having right. any impact. Because it's, a, it's having a positive impact. Yeah. That's what You can even have a negative impact, and but still it's still power. powerful. Right. Do you see what right. I'm saying? Okay. So it depends on the sphere or the, 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 the realm in which you have been placed. Mm. And you, you exert mm. that power. Now, there are women out there. There are so many women out there today. I mean, if you're on social media, I'm sure you can see it. Everybody wants to be popular now. Everybody wants to be like a celebrity, a star. I mean, people are doing so many things on social media just because they want to be seen. Maybe they want to be powerful. Maybe Reverend Jennifer, speak to the young ladies out there that are probably not looking at the right role models or probably are not thinking being, that. you know, impacted by the right people. What should they be looking out there? And what should they be to be seen? What should they do to be seen as powerful? Because I don't know if that's what everybody wants now. I mean, when I look sometimes, I'm wondering what is going on? Um, you see... Even in the midst of social media, you have people who are influencers or, or trendsetters and they mm -hmm. influence the way. I get amazed when I look at the stats that everybody's following this particular celebrity so-called and doing what they do. Mm. Um, I always say to young women, I, I say, you know, I, I, it, it, I link it to what do you want to do? Forget mm. the other people. Right. What do you want to do? Mm. What do you want to do? And I've realized that ignorance, when you are ignorant... <laughs> you, you, you can't be self-aware. So it's, for me, it's education. Mm, it, may sound, education. it may not be what people expect to hear, but it's education. Mm. It's education. I'm very passionate about people being educated. Learn to read and write, number one. Mm. It, it doesn't sound like the main thing, but it's very important. It's very important. Be aware of yourself. Be aware of yourself. And it comes by we as, you know, like older women... Affirming people. I was just going to talk about that. About affirming mentorship. people. Yes. 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 Affirming people. There's a young girl in our, our church and she's bright. So I call her doctor. You know, I, I, I do it to tease her. But I say, listen, you know, push yourself a little bit. You, you can. You know, you, you can. That's what I want to ask you about, about mentorship, about women supporting women. Now, I'm living in Ghana. I know you live in the UK. I was so shocked. I went to a conference in Nigeria two years ago. In fact, I went and came back completely changed. My mindset had changed. And it inspired me to start a group called Butterflies and Pearls to just push women, to, women in Ghana to start supporting each other. There's always the saying, you know, women are our own worst enemies and all of that. It's not the same with men. It's not the same with men. And sometimes yeah, do, I think do you, that... Do you believe so? That is not I the same with so. men. I think so. I think that, you know, do you know why I say that? I think that women, maybe because of our emotions, can sometimes be a little bit over-emotional that can lead to pettiness in a way. 
that sometimes a huge opportunity comes for a collaboration between two women. And because of something that happened in secondary school 27 years ago, they don't want to even meet I that. I find that person. men can be equally petty anyway, but that's, <laughs> um, that's a different, it's true. That's a different thing. I, 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 um, Generally, and I'll tell you why, okay. Let me, let me cite this example. Going to this conference, it was a women's conference. Number one, I was so impressed with the networking because it was proper networking. Somebody will come up to you, ah, are you Nigerian? I haven't seen you in the system. I mean, a number of people that came up to me and said that. It was, also, it was so funny. Ah, are you Nigerian? I haven't seen you anywhere. Where are you from? You know, I mean, to even come up to you and say, ah, you are a fine woman. You don't get that a lot in Ghana. I find that in Ghana, in Ghana, I find that a lot of women are intimidated by other women. I mean, you live in the UK, okay? I don't know if there's a difference. You've lived in Ghana before. Yeah. So, you know, and we, the, you know there's, there's this, you, you've you see, heard about PhD in you, Ghana. You, you, no, you see, I think that it's all a, a matter of how you would present yourself and how you would relate and how you'd make people feel comfortable. Mm. I, my, my friends sometimes tease me that I'm always going for the, what they perceive as an underdog. If I go somewhere, mm. I, 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 I'll, I'll talk to everybody. Mm. Not because I do it deliberately, so because pick, I want to. Yeah. I want to. Yeah. Um, you've got to let people feel at ease. Mm. If a person f doesn't feel at ease, with in your presence and i'm not talking about at ease where they become disrespectful but mm. you, you 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 know like in, in ghana our culture mm -hmm. we we respect is a good thing mm -hmm. and and we we should honor you know people and respect mm -hmm. but um it can sometimes be skewered you know to to, to overbalance sometimes right. in the uk you know you meet ministers and um we can call each other by our first names. It doesn't happen in Ghana. Mm. You, you understand? Mm. It doesn't happen in Ghana. Even in the UK, it doesn't happen among the Ghanaian community. Mm. So it's you part understand? Of our culture. It's part of our culture. Mm. If I address an, uh, another minister by their first name, they'll think I'll be disrespectful. Well, you even, have to if add I, the title. even if I wasn't, mm. you understand? Mm. But there are ways in which we can actually bring down barriers as if you are perceived as a successful woman. Maybe and I then, think and speak to the ladies out there and, and, <laughs> and, and let them know. This, this, this is a great tip that we can end with. You know, a way to be approachable or a way to make everybody feel comfortable around you and so that anybody can come to you without any you. intimidation. It's simple things like greeting people. Mm. Simple things like genuinely making the person know that you are concerned about them. Mm. And say, for example, in your, in your, your position now, mm. Rini Q, um, if, you were, if you go to a function, mm -hmm. you know, um, you may be ushered in, um, you know, move to the first row, mm. whatever, because of w w what you do. Take time to say hello to people. Mm -hmm. If you realize that, somebody wants to come and talk to you, don't stand aloof. Go to the person. Right. Talk to them. So be welcoming. Be welcoming. Mm. Be warm. At the end of the day, <laughs> we, 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 we're just human we're beings. All we're all human beings. Yeah. Different, but we're all human beings. Mm. That's me. I think the, the challenge sometimes, and I see it in, in even in our, our ministry, the challenge is that my people have become so comfortable that <laughs> sometimes they, they, you know, like somebody say, oh, they've, they've overstepped boundaries. Mm. But you see, um, there is a way in which you can bring awareness. Right. Do, do you right. see? Right. So that they, they, are, they, they, are, they, they feel free to, 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 to they, they don't become jealous of you. Mm. Because but you haven't you, set you, yourself. Yeah, but can, can you actually... You can't prevent people from becoming jealous of you. But there is a way in which you can act to sort of um, alleviate that a little bit. Ultimately, people will be jealous. But 
there is a way in which you can you can you, you can be by ma making sure that you yourself you don't act in a pompous stuck up way mm. so by being humble yes being yourself, humble right yeah being humble right people right. need to be humble right there's a difference between being hot tempered being um confident being a go-getter being passionate and i think i definitely have to have you on again yeah. no you ha you have to come again because we have the, there's so many like 101 more questions i have to ask you you know but it's been it's been really enlightening and really really like you know you changed my mindset on certain things that i probably hadn't thought of which is which is great, and this is why the Today's Woman Show is the best show in Ghana. You know, it's, it's good you're watching now. You know, it's the best show in Ghana. You know, so I'm so so glad you came on today. Thank I have you. a little surprise for you. So I am really really pushing for women out there to um, to love themselves, to appreciate themselves. Mm -hmm. It's so so easy to say a thousand and one beautiful things about somebody else, and then they ask you to say about yourself, and it's so difficult. <laughs> you know, yeah, so I'm true. telling women out there, I say every day, every day, when you're brushing your teeth and you're looking in the mirror, say something, you know, that you love about yourself. If nobody else around you loves yourself mm -hmm. and you love yourself, it's enough for you. Mm -hmm. So I have this little love pillow that I have created, the Renee Q love pillow. Oh, isn't that cute? And this <laughs> is for you. And every time, I, I, every time you see this, I really want you to just remind yourself of how special you are. Oh, But I want so you cute. to tell us one thing you love about you. So this is your little gift. Thank you That very I want you much. to take away. I love the butterflies, <laughs> the gold butterflies. Thank you. You're very welcome. Oh, I love it. I love it. So one thing you love about you what can you say you absolutely love about yourself? I don't give up easily. I don't give up easily. And when I believe in something, I go all out. I stick to it. I love that. Yes. I love that. Ladies, you heard it. There's no giving up. I mean, you are today's woman. If you give up, who is looking up to you? <laughs> but there's definitely somebody always looking up to you. So never, ever don't give up. We'll be right back. Thanks so much for joining me today on the Today's Woman Show. My name is Renee Q. Boatin, and many thanks to my sponsors, the Moven Pick Ambassador Hotel, GTP, the one-to-one -one bar for my lovely cocktails. To you for watching, don't miss it next week, Saturday, 11 a.m. on TV3 and DSTV channel 279. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Renee Q. G H. Have a lovely weekend, everybody. See you next week.